In this video, I'll try out your most recommended lightweight distros on this 10.1 inch netbook from 2010, as well as doubling its RAM and cleaning and repasting the CPU, which turned out to be quite the task. So in my last video, I attempted to resurrect this laptop by upgrading the old hard drive to an SSD and installing Linux. After a failed Lubuntu install, I managed to get MX Linux on it, but it still wasn't great. Luckily, a lot of you commented and gave me a bunch of recommendations and things to try out. So before we get to work, let's recap the end goal. I want to use this mini laptop for basic office work, namely editing and writing documents, reading and annotating PDFs, and some light web browsing. I also want to watch YouTube videos, although I know that's really pushing it, but we should at least try. Okay, let's begin with an easy one. Removing the battery and using it only with the charger. Done. Next. Repasting the CPU. So, as you can see, the heatsink is right here. I can remove it by unscrewing three screws, but there's only two here, you might say, and you're right. The last one is hidden under this plastic cover, and to access it, I basically have to take the whole thing apart. However, before we do so, let's check the CPU temperature under heavy load so we can compare afterwards. Heavy load here simply meaning opening Firefox. 100% CPU load. Damn. Alright, with a benchmark, let's disassemble. I won't bore you too much with the process, but here are some highlights. Okay, the heatsink is now removed. This is definitely crusty. Or perhaps chalky is a better word. Let's remove the old paste with some isopropyl alcohol. Very satisfying. After reassembling, the back cover wouldn't click in place, and that's when I realized I had four screws left over. Huh. So I removed the keyboard once again and screwed them in. Alright, time to see if it made a difference. Is that a good difference? I don't know. RAM. So I found out it actually uses DDR3, not DDR2. I then tried to swap the 1 gig for a 2 gig from this iMac. But it didn't work, even though they are identical, which confused me a bit. This left me rather demotivated, but then I remembered that in cleaning out my loft, I found this Asus laptop that I bought in 2012, I think. And, what do you know, it uses a 2 gig stick. Let's try. It works. Nice. Okay, now that we have our top-tuned netbook ready, Let's try the distro you all recommended the most, Anti-X or Antix. Oh, and one of you also recommended Ventoy, which I wasn't familiar with. But thanks, thanks a lot, it's a real time saver. Okay, we're in and we are met with this screen, Control Center. Choose Wallpaper? Hmm, let's go with Space, I like that one. Customized Look and Feel, hmm, Arc Dark. Oh. Nice, dark mode. We can change the cursor too. Let's go with the black one. Note of the desktop. Okay, so it won't change until I restart. I don't want to do that now. We can change the icons as well. So far the OS feels quite snappy, more so than MX Linux. What the hell is sloppy mouse focus? Oh, there's different themes too. This one has an Apple logo. Okay, let's open Firefox. Wikipedia... Computer clock is wrong. Hmm. Oh, there it is, date and time, and let's refresh. So the loading time is not too bad. Chimpanzee... I mean, this feels okay. Time for the real test. YouTube. This is pretty bad, but also expected. We are maxing out the poor CPU. Let's try the Pale Moon browser that some of you recommended. Pseudo apt update. Nice. Oh, can I just install it like this? sudo apt install pale moon. Okay, a few minutes later and it's done. Okay, this reminds me of Explorer. Let's try Wikipedia again. So I don't really see a difference between this and Firefox. What about YouTube? Okay, it's been loading here for three minutes. I think I'll just give it up there. What about Libre Writer? Yeah, not much to say. It's fine. Let's install Abbey Word, which you also recommended. Okay, definitely a more minimal design. I think I like it. What about games? DOSBox. So I've heard about this, but I'm not really familiar with it. Maybe you guys can enlighten me. Mahjong. Mahjong. 
Uh, okay, looks cool, but I have no idea what to do. Overall, I definitely think that N6 is an improvement to MX Linux. I could imagine running this for good and just using the laptop as a glorified typewriter, with the occasional web browsing. Anyway, let's move on to Puppy Linux, which is designed to run efficiently on older hardware. And it's different in that it supposedly loads entirely into RAM. And now that we have a whopping 2 gigs, I'm curious to see what it can do. Quick setup. Uh, okay. Let's try Firefox. Wikipedia, Chimpanzee. Okay, it feels a lot faster than Antics. YouTube? It seems the playback is a bit smoother too, although we're still maxing out the CPU. And the RAM too. Word is already installed. Cool. Oh, Gook's view. Our old friend. Hello. Fun. Oh, we have more games. Hexalate. This is quite trippy. Oh well, let's move on to Q4 OS, which you also highly recommended. Oh, we have a cursor. There's like a few seconds of delay. This is interesting. Configuring desktop theme. And we're in. Let's install. The screen is too small to display the installer. Huh. Oh, screen size. Let's try 800 by 600. So that didn't work either. Okay, Google says to make the font smaller. Yeah, also didn't work. Maybe I can just resize the window. Hmm, no. Okay, I think I'll just admit defeat here. If you have any tips, please let me know. Okay, as a bonus, I want to try Linux Mint XFCE, as I've been daily driving Mint Cinnamon for the last couple of weeks. But unfortunately, it didn't work. I tried installing it like three times, but when it asked to reboot, it just gave a no bootable drive message. Again, if you have any tips, please let me know. Conclusion. Yeah, so I certainly think Antics worked the best, and I could imagine using it on this tiny fella. I think upgrading the RAM made a huge difference, although 2 gigs is still not a lot. It's quite clear that the CPU is the bottleneck, especially when it maxes out just loading Firefox. Unfortunately, I don't think repasting the CPU made much of a difference. Yeah, and I'm sorry I couldn't fit all of your recommendations and advice into one video. If you're interested in more videos like this, please let me know. Oh, and I'm still just a beginner to all of this, so all advice, even if it seems obvious to you, is highly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.